Our next guest is a good friend of mine. Kamel Fernandez is a professional dog sports coach, international seminar speaker, longtime student of our programs. And he's been here and trained with me in person over the past 20 years. He lives with a variety of dogs of various breeds. He had a boxer punch who was just such an impressive dog to watch. Competes and coaches at the highest level. He currently is a head trainer of his own Kamel Fernandez dog training, where he offers both online and on-site training. Welcome, Kamel. What time is it over there? It is now sunny one o'clock in the morning. So only for you, Susan Garrett, only for you. That's all. That's all. I had to follow <laughs> Elliot of all the bloody people, though. I was like, oh, my God, look at this. Listen to this amazing human. Isn't I'm going to come on and talk about nonsense dog training. I just thought for our 200th episode, I want to inspire people. I want people to bring out their best, to get in touch with their highest self and be that person for their dogs. Okay, Kamel, tell me, what is going to happen in your life this year that's going to be amazing? This year, are we talking dogs or are we talking life? Because there's quite uh, a few oh, things going come on. Okay, so yeah. dog-wise, I'm literally at Crufts Starts tomorrow, officially, and I'm competing oh. there on Saturday and Sunday with two oh, dogs. Wow. So that's pretty, and two dogs that I bred, so that's pretty exciting. And so that's, yeah, that's pretty cool. And then... Well, I appreciate uh, you being on the call at one o'clock in the morning, <laughs> in spite okay. of having to... I told you it's for you, Susan. You know that you know what I think of you, so it's never a problem. Uh, so that's coming up, and then there's an exciting project that's due to be. I don't know if I can say yet, but it's on the lines of it's pretty great. It's coming out in the end of March. It's a a television y thing. That's all I can say at the Ooh. moment. I don't think they've done the big press thing, so that's quite cool. All on enforcement based dog trainings. That's really cool about the television show. Okay. Yeah. So I've got a question. What mm -hmm. do you feel that first time dog owners, what is the biggest stumbling block to them having success with their dog? Oh God, that's a great question. I think it's consistency and probably mindset. I think of the two things. Mm -hmm. Consistency I think that it's very easy to to let things go. Reinforcement is all around us. And I think people aren't always aware of that. And which being aware of what you're reinforcing, I think is a huge part of people getting the results that they want. And their mindset, the belief system that, you know, they can't or they won't, or the dog, the label they attach to the dog, whether it's the breed label, the rescue label, the rehome label, whatever the label it is that people attach mm. to their dogs, which stops them from achieving the things that they absolutely can. And I think it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, isn't it? Because that just, that imp your belief about your dog or about your own abilities, you know, that there's that belief loop. It just impacts your thoughts. It impacts your emotions. It impacts how much action you take in your dog Absolutely. training. And then the lack of action or the wrong action ends up with outcomes that proves your original beliefs. That Absolutely. I am not, I don't have value. I don't know what I'm doing. My dog is stubborn. My dog is spiteful. Yeah. Whatever those are. Yeah, yeah. that's, those Absolutely. are two really good ones, Kamel. Yeah. That, and I, and I look back, think back to when I, no, I was always a keener with my dog. My very first dog that I trained formally, like I would come home from class and I would, no computers back then, I would get out the graph paper and I'd make a chart of all the things they told us to practice and how many times we had to practice and I'd make a square for every time we were supposed to practice in a day and then I would check that off oh, every cool. time I did it. I was a keener. Yeah. You know, I'm a huge fan, follower of what you do, recallers. I always say I was there with the brown recallers, the original brown recallers. And it was the misconception that you had to dedicate an hour of solid time to dog training. And it's just that, the, that whole five minute thing, five minutes, five minutes. And it's five being minutes. present and intentional about your training and the way in which you interact and engage with your dog. And what I love about your approach to training and your philosophy is it isn't just about, which is listening to Elliot was really profound because it goes beyond the realms of dog training. Dog training is your conduit to send that message and the methodology and the approaches obviously echo that, but it goes beyond that. And having been around you and seen you, it, it isn't, this is not just Susan Garrett for show. This is Susan Garrett all the time, 24-7, which I'm sure Kim loves. <laughs> <laughs> let's not go, let's not go there. Because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's a bit much, maybe. Back then, we the recallers, the original recallers, we called it the five-minute formula. Yeah. 
And yeah. and that was what we were trying to get across to people. It doesn't have to be an dog training actually shouldn't yeah. be an hour. It yeah. should be woven into the fabric of your life with your okay. dog. And you do what on the podcast we've called the quickies that you're yeah. just getting in those little five minute training sessions. Mm -hmm. They could be five second training sessions, yeah. right? Yeah. We all have them. So how do you think about managing reinforcement all the time for your dogs? Because it's not just cookies. We all know that. Yeah, that's the thing. And like, I have no, just to qualify this, Susan has not given me any priming or nope. uh, this, say this. I this know. Is, it's once you switch your, your mindset into understanding that reinforcement is all around us and the way in which you engage with your dog, the way in which you orchestrate your dog's life, the way in which you, you see the world through the lens of the dog, well, it's a game changer. And it's, I constantly, I slightly jest and slightly banter with people that have puppies for me because I actually have a litter in the background of puppies, cute puppies, and they'll be obviously be going to their homes. It always makes me laugh about, they say on a little Facebook chat, oh, my puppy's been doing X and my puppy's chewed the sideboard and my puppy's chewed the curtain. And I always respond, my puppy hasn't because it's in a crate in a greater community. It's, why would I let my dog do that stuff and then go and okay, but they're amazing people and I can have yeah, yeah, yeah. them. But what I, the point of you go, once you've adjusted your mindset to why would I let my dog do that in the same in the first place? So understanding that reinforcement always happens it is often, and I would say this, I say this literally tonight when I was teaching class. What are you reinforcing? Ask yourself that constant question. Understand that reinforcement, people get so stuck on it being the tug toy and the food in their hand, but never mind their dog's barking at them and they st they put the hand down to say, stop barking, and that's it, bang, the dog's been reinforced. Things like that, or the dog that pulls on the lead and you persist going forward, you're reinforcing that behavior. So many things in which reinforcement, it constantly happens, and I think that's the biggest thing that people just don't, get their head round enough that which is where which is why the other option of i'm going to use compulsion because or aversives comes into a question and this is something that obviously you talked about extensively that's why it becomes an option because it's not truly understanding that reinforcement is all around us and if you can view the lens sorry view the world from your dog's lens you're going to you're going to be able to change things and not have those issues or understand where the value is and how you switch that value back to you like did had a question somebody that said asked this about uh, this afternoon about they've got two dogs and they constantly play how do they they and the dog won't bring the ball back because it runs off with the other dog and it was that's a reinforcement issue where is the reinforcement where is the value let's like try and manipulate the environment and therefore the dog's choices absolutely and i was i had some people i have a little get together of people on saturday we were running courses getting ready for world team tryouts <coughs> and so they're not my students necessarily mm -hmm. and they train differently obviously. Mm -hmm. And I think we're at week seven of these get together. And finally, I said, because a lot of them are sh have these start lines that are not mm -hmm. that great. And I'm like, can I just interject that mm -hmm. the reinforcement is the jump? Jump. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. Because in this, if your dog is really keen on agility, and if you're thinking of trying out for the world team, they probably are, mm -hmm. then you've got to realize that's the biggest reinforcement. So you yeah. going back and giving them a cookie, you going back yeah. and getting them to tug, you going back and saying, ah, all of yeah. that is reinforcing the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. so it's just to recognize for the individual dog, what yeah. is reinforcement? Like, do you remember my first dog, Shelby? And it was a rock. That yeah. was her number one re reinforcer. Mm -hmm. All right, we can go with that. Yeah. Uh, and and decaf we, was, um, what was decaf? It was like uh, water. Ice waters. Yeah. Yeah. Ice water. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and it is th this, it's the, I, the opportunity to chase her mother. So yeah. that is, I would say that might even trump swimming. That is the biggest wow. thing. And mm -hmm. so it's about knowing what that is for your dog that you can strategically reinforce Absolutely. other things. So I strategically yeah. reinforce the start line by knowing the ability to do agility is the biggest thing. And then the ability, and so now I've got probably one of my nicest walk in heel position with any of my yeah. dogs is with this because it's always been reinforced, not so much wow. with cookies, yeah. but with the chance to run. 
Yeah. And it's that understanding. Obviously, this has been raised with recallers, etc. Yeah. That's innate within her. And yeah. no amount of you tugging, etc. is ever going to substitute. Because she's a herding bred border collie. That's her yeah. ultimate thing. And I think that's where often people don't and always appreciate the dog that they have in front of them and the dog that they're training. So, you know, that's going to differ from from this to Taylor, for example, or from Belize. Exactly. They can have very different desires that it's your job as their owner to tap into what does this dog need? What does this dog want? And then utilizing that to get ultimately what you want. Exactly. I'm trying to put in another layer with tater salad because mm -hmm. I started this game to keep him out of hunting in the woods. Mm -hmm. I started a game, I don't know, last summer, but maybe the summer before where we, he walks beside me and I count one, two, three, and then I'll throw a cookie somewhere in the deep grass that he has to find it. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I don't want it always to be about cookies. So I was going to transfer it to you, pick up this tug toy, only this one little tug toy to find it on the path. Then you give me cookies. It works mm -hmm. great in the house, but he's, yeah, no. <laughs> I need primary right now. Uh, yeah, I'm not yeah. really going to anything else yeah. outside. You yeah. want me to stay out of there. So it's, it's interesting. Okay. Kamel, as a dog trainer, what do you feel is your superpower? Oh God. Well, this is one I didn't think I actually had. It was actually empathy and compassion. Oh. Yeah. And I didn't think I had that <laughs> funny <laughs> enough. And that I've developed that with time and age and experience. I would, I would think to be a cop, you'd have to have some empathy. That's, that's where it stemmed from. That's yeah. where it stemmed from. So I didn't have it. And it was being in situations that required a great deal of empathy and compassion when, you know, really tragic circumstances, when you're having to deliver awful news to a parent, for example, mm. is the most extreme end of needing the, the requirement of passion, compassion and empathy. And it just in your to do your job at your best. And I have to say, prior to that, when I was teaching, I definitely didn't have it. And I would say it's something that uh, I'd say humor. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but but yeah, definitely. I think that's a, that's something that I have grown to develop. And it's something that, again, like all of us, and it's interesting to listen to Elliot, it's something that you have to do daily work on to mm. remind yourself of those key things that, you know, your aspirations aren't necessarily the person in front of you. You have to align yourself with what their goals are, what their ambitions, what is it that they want from their dog and really dial in from that and appreciate that people are often doing the best they can, a bit like dogs in the circumstances mm -hmm. that they've got them themselves into. And as a dog trainer, you are there as part of their journey and their processes to try and facilitate them moving to a better place. Certainly some of the behavioral cases, people are in a really raw state. I know there was a, this been talk about separation anxiety. People live in really, they almost alter their whole life to accommodate for their dog's behavior because it's all consuming and it's a and it's a really life-changing behavioral challenge as are so many reactivity aggression mm -hmm. and when somebody invites you into that that process that journey however you want to articulate it to me that's a that's something that should be treated with the utmost compassion and respect and empathy to do the best you can for them and always be willing to put down your your ego i think is a huge thing that i think dog trainers huge. can often suffer from and it, we're only you know a great a, a trainer beyond, but that i was a huge mentor to me always said to, you're only as good as your dog on the day and that's a great thing to remind yourself in respect of the level that you're at you're only as good as your dog on the day at the end of the day the dog's got to do you the best it can in the circumstances that you have chosen to put them in give them a break and remind yourself that at the end of the day as amazing as they are, they're a dog and they're doing the best they can. Absolutely. They're an invincible creature that's infallible. I think ego as well is something to remind people of as well. Huge. I think that for me, the, the evolution or the fanning of the flames of empathy for me, because it was not my strength 20 years ago, uh, I always had empathy for dogs. That was never yeah. a, a no, problem yeah. for me. And that empathy for dogs is what taught me to have empathy for people. And and yes, and I think that's why we all have dogs is mm -hmm. that they help us rise to our highest self and to. And I think if we, you know, you, we, I think that often people that ha have that gravitate to an approach training that allows them to extend that. But I think that, and this is something beyond just dog training. It's to, if we can be kind to our dogs, then often we should be kind to each other. And I think that's something mm. that we all need to do work on reflecting on ourselves. And I include myself in that statement. None of us, I'm certainly not perfect. 
it's a and to remind ourselves that everybody's going through their stuff and i think that being kind is a huge thing that we should, should always remind ourselves to be and i think that's part of the evolution as well is, mm -hmm. is it, when we are truly reinforcement based trainers we become yeah. reinforcement based people <laughs> and that kindness is to people even that can't hear us when they're cutting mm -hmm. us off in traffic so our mm -hmm. language towards them because I love the line from Wayne Dyer, and I've said it on my podcast before, mm -hmm. that when you squeeze a lemon, all that can come out is what's inside, and that's mm -hmm. lemon juice. Mm -hmm. What comes out of you at times when you're pressured, that's what's really that's inside me. of you. Yeah. And examine yeah. that, yeah. because yeah. is that what you really want to come out? And it happens behind a keyboard. It happens on a Absolutely. phone. I was on hold for so long today. But it, that's where we can show up at our best to our dogs is when mm -hmm. we can show up that way to everybody. Absolutely. So Absolutely. thank you, Kamal, for being here. Swagger says thank you. And he says, oh, oh best boy. Well, been over across the pond. Best Hearts, pleasure. everybody, no, for, for you. For Kamal. Not for you, Susan. Just on a final note, thank you for all that yeah. you do. You know, I'm probably going to do you out of a lot of money here by saying this, but you can watch <laughs> Susan Garrett's podcast and probably train your dog without doing any of her courses. However, I have to preface that by saying, I'm probably on all, I've done all of Susan Garrett's courses. So I'm contradicting myself here, but yeah. you are a game changer. You are changing the way people were, let's see this world. And for that massive, Thank massive you, question. Kamel. I appreciate you. <laughs>